Hey y'all, I'm Mandy, and this is Mandy in the Making. Welcome back to another What's for Dinner. I'm gonna show you three nights of dinners that we've had this week. They're all gonna be really simple and really delicious. I'm in another mood. A mood where I do not want to cook. I am not feeling it today, but I am excited about what I'm cooking. Like I want someone else to cook it and serve it to me. <laughs> that would be great. Tonight's dinner is a really simple one, so it's not gonna be too bad. Once I get started, it'll be fine. It is ground beef queso chili, I think is what it's called. Hang on. Yeah, that's what it's called. So we love to have chili in the fall and winter, and I thought this sounded like a good twist on it, so we're gonna give it a try. Let me flip you around and show you the ingredients. Okay, so all of this right here is what we need for the chili part. And then for the queso sauce part that we will mix in, we've got this over here. Um, so let me do all the measurements. The only chopping I have to do is to chop up this onion really fine. It's such a small piece of an onion. I don't even think I'm gonna get my onion chopper out. I think I'm just gonna chop it really quickly. I'm gonna do all my measurements just to make it that much quicker and then we'll get started. have y'all know that Gracie knows that when I get this thing out it means cheese she's already learned she's already eaten one piece and we'll give her a little bit more Gracie Lou is he good she said it's gone okay I'm gonna use my Dutch oven but you can just use a large pot I'm heating it up to medium-high heat I totally forgot to show y'all I mean it's called ground beef queso chili you need ground beef. That wasn't in my original lineup, so sorry about that. I had not grabbed that out of the fridge. But I've got 93.7 just so I won't have to drain it. I'm gonna add a little bit of olive oil to the bottom. And we are going to put the pound of ground beef in there and my diced onion and a little salt and pepper and just cook all of that up until this is no longer pink. Okay, this is done browning up. We're gonna add in some beef broth. It calls for two cans, which equals right around 30 ounces and this is 32 ounces so it's going to be really close but I'm going to add in this beef broth I'm also going to add in this can of petite diced tomatoes my store only had the no salt added so I just grabbed what they had a can of condensed tomato soup And we're gonna add in our seasonings. I've got four teaspoons of chili powder, a teaspoon of ground cumin, a teaspoon of garlic powder, and a half a teaspoon of dried oregano. Okay, I'm just gonna stir this to combine and we're gonna bring it up to a boil. You know what I almost forgot to add? My two cans of pinto beans that I have drained and rinsed. Those go in now too. Now let's bring this up to a boil. I'm also gonna preheat the oven and put some of this in to go along with our chili. I thought that sounded good. Let's see. Preheat to 425, let's do that. Okay, it's come up to a bowl. That didn't take long at all. I'm gonna add in two cups of dry rotini noodles. So there's one cup and a second cup. Okay, we are gonna let this boil for 10 to 12 minutes just until the noodles are done. I'm just gonna keep an eye on it. And while we let that boil, I've got to make the queso sauce. I've got this medium sized saucepan. I've got two tablespoons of butter in there. I've got it on medium high heat. I'm gonna let that completely melt down. That is completely melted. We're gonna add in two tablespoons of flour and a teaspoon of salt. And I'm just gonna whisk this together for about a minute. Okay, now I'm gonna add in two cups of whole milk, and I'm not gonna be able to do this while I'm filming because I've got to whisk it in, so a little bit at a time. So I'm gonna add all two cups in, and then I'll be back. Okay, I've got it in here. I'm going to let this come to a boil and thicken. It says it'll take it five to eight minutes, so I'm just gonna keep an eye on it, and I'm going to make sure I whisk it pretty frequently. Also, I spilled some over here. Y'all know what that smells like? Burned milk. It smells really good. Really, really good.
Okay, I'm still whisking this. It is starting to thicken up. So I'm about to add in our cheese. I'm gonna add in two cups of shredded cheddar cheese. I'll add a little bit at a time and stir it around. And just keep adding. Everybody hop aboard the Hot Mess Express. Hot Mess. <laughs> Shut up, Steven. Okay, so this is done. It is ready to be poured over here into our chili. Steven is in here now, so he's gonna help me film. I very much appreciate that. Okay, so we're gonna let this kinda all cook together for like five minutes. I'm about to take our garlic bread out of the oven and then it's gonna be time to eat. chili with noodles in it. I know, that's different, and then this cheese sauce that I added is a little different too. It smells delicious. It's really good. I don't know if I've ever had anything quite like that. Really? Yeah, that's really good. Well, I'm excited. Yeah, that's really good. Different? Different. It's very hearty, I mean, the noodles and the meat, beans and all that. Good starches in there. Yeah. Okay, so Cole gives he said he didn't want to be on camera today. So Cole gives it two thumbs up. He really does like it. And I'm excited to give it a try. It looks really good. Lou, you approve because it has cheese. You want some cheese? Huh? <laughs> you already had some, sweet girl. So I really love this, but I don't get a a chili vibe from it. Chili to me is a little more spicy and I feel like this could use some more spice. We could definitely spice it up. But say what you just said to me, babe. <clears throat> this would be good for like someone with a sensitive palate, you know, that doesn't like over the top spicy stuff. And right. Just real rich flavors. It's got a lot of good flavor to it, I think. I yeah. like the cheese and I like how it enriches it and everything. It makes it kind of a creamy, tomato-y right. Right. Kind of sauce, you know. But it definitely dials back like yeah. the spiciness of it right. so I wouldn't mind adding some cayenne or something in there just to kick it up a notch for us but it is really good but when I when I eat it it reminds me more of a like a, a creamy tomato mm -hmm. with goodness added in right. I wouldn't ever take a bite of this and think chili yeah. <clears throat> what do you want little girl it is good though it is okay y'all the second meal this week changed. I had not planned on it, but I was really kind of craving it. We've never had it before, but I'm really excited about it. It is called crock pot chicken bacon ranch soup. It's kind of a crazy day, and I just figured it would be easiest for me to just put this in the crock pot and have it ready for dinner, so that's what we're gonna do. For this recipe, I'm gonna need just one pound of chicken breast, so probably just two of these chicken breasts. They are really thick. I'm gonna cut them in half. I will need these diced up and we're gonna use egg noodles. If you've been around for a while, you know egg noodles are not our favorite, but it doesn't use a ton of them. I think it's gonna be okay. And with everything else that's gonna be in here, I really do think it's gonna be okay. Um, we're gonna add some ranch seasoning, two cans of cream of chicken, this low sodium chicken broth. She said it's very important that you get the reduced sodium. And then we'll add a little bit of water in there too. And that's pretty much it. So the egg noodles won't go in until 30 minutes before it's time to eat. Also, finally remembered to pick these up at the grocery store. They were on the end cap when I was leaving. That's the only reason why I remembered these liners. So I'm very excited that I have that this week, but I'm gonna go ahead and chop this up and get going.
we're gonna get started. So I need both cans of these cream of chicken soups. I need this one can of chicken broth that is reduced sodium. I need one cup of water, so I'm just gonna fill this almost to the top and I'll have my cup. I'm gonna go ahead and stir this around just to combine it really well. It says I need two ounces of ranch seasoning powder and when you look on the back here, it says three tablespoons equals one ounce. I'm not gonna do six tablespoons of this though. I think I'm gonna do four. I think that should be fine. Now I'm gonna add in my three carrots and my three stalks of celery that's been diced. Lastly, going into the mix are my two chicken breasts that I did cut in half. They were super thick. That's it. This is going to go on high for three to four hours just until the chicken is done cooking. That's another reason why I cut it in half. It's just so that it would cook a lot quicker. So I'm going to put it on high. We're going to check it at three hours. Whoops. There we go. Okay. We'll be back in three hours. Okay, y'all, it's only been two and a half hours. Well, not even. And my chicken is definitely done. I just checked on it. With it on high, it did just fine. So now I need to add in two cups of egg noodles and put the lid back on and leave it on high for 30 minutes to cook the egg noodles. And while that's cooking, I'm going to crisp up some bacon. making sure those are all kind of submerged in the liquid. Yeah, we're gonna let it do its thing for 30 more minutes. Arts and crafts, baby. It's arts and crafts. Okay, it's been 30 minutes. I think our egg noodles are done. Now I just need to remove our chicken and shred it up and put it back in. And then it'll be time to eat and we'll put the bacon on top. Y'all, this smells so good. So this is called chicken bacon ranch soup, baby. Oh yeah. That is good. Is it? That is really, really good. <sighs> I was a little nervous about this one. Mmm. Wow. So creamy. Mm hmm Rich in flavor. It's like a very creamy... Chicken noodle soup? Chicken noodle soup. Mm -hmm. It's like... Can you taste the hints of ranch in there? Yeah, I mean, you, it, you can tell that it definitely enriches the flavor. Okay. But I don't think you would be able to pick out that it's ranch. Yeah. Okay, so it's not overpowering. That's what I was worried about. That it was ranch? Yeah, it's, it's a ranch powder that's in there, so. You like it too, buddy? Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. I mean, this just, that looks like fall to me. Mm-hmm. Yeah. What do you think, Lou? So I just have to tell y'all, I asked the boys, I said, which would you prefer, this or chicken noodle soup? And they both said, this. Mm -hmm. Which I was pretty shocked at, because we have some really good chicken noodle soup <laughs> recipes. This reminds me of like a thousand percent better homemade version of chunky soup, if that makes sense. You know, I like the Campbell's it. chunky soup? Yeah, the, the Campbell's chunky, chunky soup that you buy in the can. Yeah. Um, it reminds me of something like that. Okay, I could see that. It doesn't taste right, like it. Right. It's like way better in flavor, but it just kind of reminds me of something like that. Sweet. I am so excited that they said this is better than regular chicken noodle soup. So y'all give this one a try. It's our third meal of the week and y'all know what that means. It's subby supper night. Tonight, subby supper we're really excited about because we love a good Reuben and this is oven grilled Reuben sandwiches. 
Tonight's recipe comes from Judy. Judy lives in Arizona. She is a retired chiropractor. I love chiropractic care. We totally believe in that in this house. And she's also a single mother to two children, well, adult children, because she's also a nana to four adult grandkids. She loves to cook, especially for others. And she's also a knitter and a quilter. And she's involved in several charity projects, including one where she makes Halloween quilts for children who were in the hospital during that holiday. I love that. Thank you so much, Judy, for sending this over. We are so excited to give this one a try. I've got this large skillet I'm heating to medium high heat. So we don't, we're not making quite as many sandwiches as the recipe calls for, so I'm not using the exact measurements. I will have the recipe linked below. So this is apple cider vinegar. I've got a little less than pretty much a fourth a cup, and I need a tablespoon and just a little extra of sugar. We're gonna bring this up to a boil and we're gonna make sure that all of the sugar dissolves out. I know this is a very large skillet and you're probably wondering why in the world I used a large skillet, but there's a method to my madness you'll see in just a second. I've also got my oven preheated to 450. While I'm waiting on that to come to a boil over there, which will be just a second, I'm going to do our spread for the sandwich. It's just a fourth a cup of mayonnaise and a fourth a cup of Dijon mustard. The reason why I'm using less apple cider vinegar and sugar is because my bag of coleslaw is not 16 ounces. Mine is a 10 ounce bag, which is gonna be fine for us gonna make sure all of that sugar is dissolved and it looks like it is. So now we're just going to add this coleslaw mix in here. I'm gonna stir that all around and then we're gonna cover it. And we're also gonna throw it on the uh, on the stove, baby, because that's what we do. <laughs> I'm just gonna add the lid to this and we're gonna let all of that soften up for like eight to 10 minutes. I'm gonna put a little bit of this Dijon and mayo on each side of the sandwich. Oh, this smells so good. It is softening up really quickly. We're just gonna give it a couple more minutes and then these will go on this, or this will go on the sandwiches as well. I'm gonna get more cheese out. There's always more cheese, right? That's right. <laughs> because this bread is so big, I'm gonna use two pieces of cheese on one slice of bread. salt and pepper. Okay, let's go put this on the sandwiches, baby. Let's do it. And we're not gonna put it over here on this last sandwich because that's cold and he doesn't want it, so. tablespoons of unsalted butter. I'm gonna melt this really quickly and then we're just gonna brush the tops. These are going in the 450 degree oven for about 10 minutes. We just want them to get good and toasted. We're on a bit of a time crunch, so I'm gonna turn this over to broil just to make sure it crisps up faster. I 
Okay, so we're doing a very impromptu, kind of rushed <laughs> taste test here because they've got to leave to take Cole to church to youth group. Mm. Classic Reuben. Really, really, really good. Yay, I'm so glad. Toasting the top. Perfect. Sets this off. Yeah. How's that um, kind of flavor of the mayonnaise and mustard mixture that you made? What about the kraut type, the oh, coleslaw mix? It's really Is that good? good. I mean, it's very kraut. You know, you've got the, the, the salty, vinegary, yeah. sweet and sour sort of thing going on there. Judy, thank you so much for sending this recipe in. This is one of my favorite sandwiches. Really do appreciate it. So I just realized I never recorded my outro for this week. So I thought I'd come on here and say thank you so much for watching. I really hope you enjoyed this week's meals. I know that we did. And I really enjoyed them because they were so easy. This was one of those weeks where I just really didn't feel like cooking anything that was going to take a lot of time. And all of these were super simple. So I hope you'll give them a try. Um, I did include a crock pot recipe this week. And I'm got, I've got more crock pot recipes that are going to be in a what's for dinner. Another slow cooker crock pot recipe what's for dinner coming up in October or Crocktober. So make sure that you are subscribed if you haven't already. That way you won't miss that. Thank you guys so much for being here and I will see y'all next time. Bye. I got this, I got this. I can do this, I can do this. I don't wanna cook, I don't wanna cook. It me, baby. It me. <laughs> it's our third meal of the week. Can I put cheese on this slice? Yeah, you can. Go ahead. I'm just supposed to do it at the end, but I did it wrong. It's fine. Oh, it's fine. It's oh, fine. oh. No, go ahead. No, 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 no. Sure. Go ahead. <laughs> Does this mean I get to eat this piece? Yes, eat that piece. <laughs> Yay. Thank you, Judy, for sending this over. This is uh, one of my favorite sandwiches. Thank you, Judy, for sending this over. This is one of my favorites. I can't speak. Earlier, so I'm filming it now. And my son is playing the piano.